What if I told you that given the right circumstances, an advantage is as strong as plus 5 in Baldur's Gate 3? And in most cases, it's stronger than plus 3. No. There's something tangible about regular bonuses in D&D. You add one so you can throw one less. Your dice muscle might rest a little bit this time. But even regular bonuses are not that simple. What if you're trying to put a spear through a beholder's eye? If you're a level 1 peasant and only can hit the beholder at 18 or more, having a plus 3 is so much more than if you're a level 20 demigod with a boring 5 being enough to impale the poor beast. In the first case, your average damage is doubled. In the second case, it only grows by a measly 19%. This is an important concept you have to keep in mind. How much a bonus is worth depends on how hard the test is. But even if plus one is technically worth the most on the hardest test, that's only if the expected reward from the test was comparable in the first place. Usually, a lower hit chance also means lower average damage, and then you're putting plus one into something objectively worse. Advantages are even more complicated. You get to throw two dice and pick the higher result. It might sound simple, but if each plus one is worth five percentage points, how many percentage points is an advantage worth? Oh, now even that depends on the difficulty of the test. To precisely figure out how this works, we'll need a bunch of numbered squares. Each square represents a different result on a d20. Now we'll color them according to whether the test is a success or a failure. Difficulty class 11, exactly 50-50. We can easily calculate this by counting the number of green squares and dividing them by the total number of squares. In comparison, DC6 gets us a 75% chance and DC16 only 25%. If we're throwing two dice, we can't easily represent them with a single row. We need a whole square. This time, there's a square for each pair of results. We'll need some labels for that. Alright. So, if one of the dice is 9 and the other is 14, your roll hits this square, but if it's the other way, it's this square. It really doesn't matter if rows or columns represent the first die, but it's good to stay consistent. I'm pretty sure you can guess which squares are the ones that get painted green now. DC is 16. This looks interesting. I think we can calculate the probability now. Let's do it in Python. Don't worry if it looks scary, you don't need to know anything about coding to get through this bit. And maybe you'll get curious enough to watch some of my coding videos. We'll import pandas first, it's Python's Excel, and I feel like calculating this for all the cases at the same time and looking at a nice table of results afterwards. The next step is creating a table. In Pandas, it's called a data frame, and we want it to have a single column called DC, with numbers from 1 to 20. The final step is the actual calculation, and let's make it less scary step by step. 400 is the total number of squares, so let's call it that. Now this is just the difficulty class, minus 1, exactly the number of results that would fail in our test or how wide the large red square is. If we square that, yes, in Python you write a power with two asterisks, if we square that, we get the number of red squares. And the total number of squares minus red squares is green squares. So yeah, our original code does indeed calculate the probability of success with an advantage. Let's bring it back. Time for a quick plot, and... On y-axis we have the probability and on x difficulty class. So we're looking into how probable the advantage is, given a particular DC. 
It looks a bit curved. Let's draw a line that represents probabilities without advantage. Feel free to pause and analyze the code if you really need to. Let's plot it again. It seems like the advantage probability gets further from the regular probability the closer to the middle we get. Hmm, if we move the orange line up by 0.05, it would be just like giving ourselves a plus one bonus. I feel like I could therefore calculate how good the advantage is in comparison to the regular thing and... Here we go. Let's look at the results. It seems like the closer we get to 50-50, the stronger the advantage is in comparison to regular bonuses. Oh, we even get the funny number at 7 and 15. And in most cases, it's still stronger than plus 3. And it seems symmetrical. Because it's a parabola, and all parabolas are. Wait, 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 are those fractional bonuses? What does it even mean for a bonus to be fractional? I think it doesn't really mean anything special in our case. Unless we had continuous dice. Let's agree continuous dice are not a thing, please. 4.20 is just a tiny bit more than 4. But wait, didn't the regular bonuses grow in power as difficulty rose? Isn't it the same with advantages? Well, yes it is. If we look at the ratio of advantage versus no advantage, it does slowly grow as the test becomes harder. It's just at a different rate than the regular bonuses do. If you have a choice between a plus 2 and an advantage, the answer will be different depending on the difficulty of the test. To have a better understanding of how all those things interact, let's rearrange the squares a bit. The plot you see here is called a histogram. It shows us how often does a given outcome happen if you, for example, roll a die. I guess it's also used for some other random stuff. It's interesting how an advantage looks a little bit like a triangle. And also it now kinda makes sense that we have a 75% probability of success here. It's such a shame you can't just pick a difficulty class, choose an advantage or a disadvantage, add a bunch of bonuses, maybe even random ones like Shadowheart's 1d4 guidance. Oh, I cannot live without this cantrip. Then have a look into what the result distribution would look like and roll. Wait, I did build an app for that. Check it out. It's on orchard.blog slash dice. And if you enjoyed this video, leave a like and maybe even subscribe. I mostly make videos about coding at all levels of difficulty and always fun.